we are now going to solve linear equations with multiple steps. So sometimes we're going to add or subtract, sometimes we're going to divide. The whole idea is that I want x alone. x is not alone. I have a negative 3 and I have a 5. I have to get rid of the negative 3 or the positive 5. To get it alone, which one do I do first? Well, if you thought that I would divide by negative 3, the problem is I just can't divide a piece of an equation. I would have to divide this whole side, and that would put fractions in. We never want to put fractions in. We want to take them away. If I have to deal with fractions, I'll deal with them at the end. So. I have to get rid of my 5 first. This is attached by addition, so hopefully you know I'm going to subtract 5 from each side. My minus 3x stays. Plus 5 minus 5 goes to 0. I get equals positive 9. I forget all this. This is my new equation. I want x alone. Do I divide by positive 3 or negative 3? negative 3, because I want this x to be positive. If this would have been a plus, unlike signs would have given me a negative. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So x is negative 3. If I solve this one, I want y alone. y is not alone. I work on the side of the y. I have a negative 5 and a negative 3. I'm not going to divide first because I'd have to divide this whole side and that's putting an algebraic fraction in, which is what I don't want. I get rid of the 3 first. I add 3. I'm going to get minus 5y equals 20. I divide by exactly the coefficient of x. So I get y is negative 4. So, to solve an equation, I think of mainly two goals. One, I want all x's on one side. My second goal, I want x alone, or I want to isolate x. So whenever you get stuck, you think, I want all x's on one side, x alone. All right, let's say I have one with an x on both sides. Let's say I have 2x minus 17 equals 3x minus 3. Now, you have a lot of choice. Whatever you do to one side, you can do to the other side. I could start, subtract 2x, subtract 2x. I could start, add 3, add 3. I could start. Add 17, add 17. You'll see I do them all the same, so they'll look the same. So if you have trouble with equations, I would do them all the same. I always start with my x's, and I always start with my lower x. Because if you do them all the same, it increases your speed, almost double. So I'm going to start with my lower coefficient. You could start here, but then you'll get minus x. If that's what you want, that's fine. But I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. If you have trouble with equations, draw a line down where your equal sign is so you can see at a glance both sides have to match exactly. This goes to 0. I have negative 17 equals. Subtract, take the sign of the larger, x minus 3. You forget what you're doing. You think of your goal. I want x alone. The people that mess up equations start going and adding 17. Then they start to get confused and have a sign mistake. I don't care about the negative 17 right now. My goal is I want x alone. Work on the side of the x. I have to add 3. That goes to 0. So I get x is negative 14. Let's do another one. Let's say I have 7x minus 8 equals 6x plus 3. 
I have two goals. All my X's on one side. So I'm going to start with my X's. I'm going to start with my lower coefficient. So I'm going to subtract 6X, subtract 6X. Remember, I can only combine like terms. I can't six, subtract 6X from an 8. It's got to be X's under X's, numbers, numbers. So I get X minus 8 equals, if that goes to 0, 3. Then you got to think, I want X alone. X is not alone. I want X alone. I'm going to add 8, add 8. So I get X equals 11. So now, all we got to do is add distributive property. Let's say I have 2 times X minus 1 equals 6 times x plus 1. Have to do distributive property first. So I distribute my 2 through the parentheses. 2x minus 2. Make sure you understand why it's a 2 and not a 1. Equals 6x plus 6. I have to multiply the 6 through each term in the parentheses. Then it's just like the one above. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. I get negative 2, that goes to 0, 4x plus 6. So now, you forget what you're doing, you start to get confused. You think of your two goals. I want all x's on one side, they are. I want x alone. Hmm. x is not alone. You work on the side of the x. I'm work on this side. I don't touch this. X is not alone. I have to get rid of the 4 or the 6. So which one do you think I would get rid of first? It's got to be the 6. I'm not going to divide by 4. That's putting a fraction in. We leave that to the last step. So I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. So I get 4x equals negative 8. Then I think you'll know what to do. Divide by the coefficient of x, so I get x equals negative 2. We'll do one more. Let's say I have one like this. 5 plus 9x minus 4 equals x minus 5 plus 7x. So now, I could start, I guess, adding and subtracting, subtract 7x, subtract 7x, but before I do that, because we can make careless mistakes that way, there is something I should do if I have a big one. I should combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. So, what I want to do is combine these two. And I'm going to get 9x plus 1. On this side, I can combine my x and my 7x. And I'm going to get 8x minus 5. And we'll write our rules down how to solve equations under this. Then, I want all my x's on one side. So I have x plus 1 equals negative 5. Then I want x alone. So I get x equals negative 6. So to solve equations, linear equations, first step, check to see if we can use distributive property. If we can, we have to do distributive property first. Second step, combine like terms on same side of equal sign. Third step, 
We want all our x's on one side. So we're going to add the opposite of the variable term. Fourth step, which is here. We're going to add the opposite of the constant term. Last step, divide by the coefficient of x. So now we'll do one more that has everything in it. Here we go. Distributive property first. Minus 4x, minus 12. We got to copy over our minus 2x equals 3x plus 6. Did distributive property. Step 2. Combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. The signs are like, add and take the same sign. I'm over here. I check, but there's nothing to combine. If there was, I would. So I get 3x plus 6. Step 1 is distributive property. Step 2, combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign. Step 3, I want all my x's on one side. So I'll subtract 3x, subtract 3x. I get negative 9x, negative 12 equals 6. Now I want x alone. So again, I did distributive property, combine like terms on the same side of the equal sign, all my x is on one side. Now I have to get x alone. X is not alone. I work on the side of the x. I want to get rid of the negative 9, negative 12. You don't touch the 6. So which one do I get rid of first? The 12. I'm not going to divide or put an algebraic fraction in. makes it worse. So I'm going to add 12. I have minus 9x equals 18. Then you're going to know, divide by the coefficient of x, make sure it's exactly the same because I want a positive x, equals negative 2. I just want to do two more equations because these are the ones that people get wrong all the time. I'll put a star for this one. A common mistake on this one there are those people that want to distribute the 3. If the 3 was here, I would distribute the 3. The 3 is way out here. That means what's right next to the parentheses is really a 1. So if you want to, put your 1 in. I can't combine these, 3 minus 1, first, because order of operation, multiplication comes first. You have to do distributive property first. So my 3 stays. So I get minus x plus 8 plus 2x equals 7x minus 1. So all I really did was distribute a property. Second step, combine like terms. So I have a 2x and a minus 1x. So I get x. I combine my numbers. I get plus 11 equals 7x minus 1. So no matter how big they are, I should end up with something that looks like this. We did distributive property, combine like terms. Then I want all my x's on one side. You have choice this time, I'll subtract x. I get 11 equals 6x minus 1. You forget what you're doing, you think of your goal. Always think, you want all x's on one side, they are. I want x alone, it's not alone. Have to get rid of the 6 and the negative 1. Not going to divide, puts a fraction in, you got to get rid of the 1. So I get 6x equals 12. Divide by 6, x is going to be 2. The other one people get wrong is this little one. 
let's say 10x minus 5 equals 9x. There's two different ways to do it. I want all my x's on one side, numbers on the other. So I could subtract 10x, subtract 10x. Goes to 0. I get minus 5 equals negative x. Then you have to know you're not done. There's really a 1. So I've got to divide each side by negative 1. So I get x equals positive 5. Or let's say I have 10x minus 5 equals 9x. If you subtract 9x from each side, which is fine. Here you get x, here you get minus 5, that goes to 0. My answer is not negative 5, and this is what people make a mistake on. If a whole side goes to 0, you have to put the 0. Then it's a two-step problem. Add 5x equals Five. Just try one more before we go. Let's make this um, 8x plus 2 equals 7x and solve for x. So, depending on how you do it, if I subtract 8x, subtract 8x, I'll get 2 equals negative x. Divide by negative 1, so I'll get x equals negative 2. That's it.